Not already like September, August, and then have the team coming over in October, working all the way to uh, in spring or in summertime. The Mango Film Project will start in February and continues over the summer until September, we think. So at the Blender Conference, we cannot present anything yet, apart from that we have lots of ideas and things. So I would like to use this session to quickly introduce to uh, what we plan to do, uh, the people who are going to be involved, and of course, get the feedback from the audience, like, okay, what do you guys expect from it? Or what do you do not want it to be? Uh, uh, what are the lessons learned? Um, are you guys maybe getting tired of open movies? Uh, you want to have something else, uh, or games? Well, that kind of things I would like to hear. But first, uh, very quick, so what is this project? What is uh, Mango about? And who's going to work on it? So, what we want to do is uh, explore the visual effect pipeline. And this is what uh, Ian has been showing. There's a lot of interest in it. It's really fun. Make film, do motion tracking, add 3D elements, bring everything together, get really good color grading, compositing, and everything working to get convincing film. Nowadays, you cannot make any film anymore without having computer graphics in it. There's a lot of little blender things that have to be worked on to, uh, to make that work. Like Ian is used to work with Adobe After Effects. That's how he makes crappy looking 3D awesome, right? That's the trick. So that kind of tricks, we want to have that in Blender too. So what is that, right? It's not that complicated. It's just computer graphics, right? Buttons, some masking, sliders, and they're done, right? Yeah. So that's the things uh, we would like to see in Blender working. The green screen keying is mentioned a lot. The current nodes in the compositor can do some keying, but uh, it's, it's... I mean, I've, I've seen keying software in the, in the 90s already with lots of ideas and, and technology behind it to make perfect keys for hair, for glass, for everything which is possible. But we will probably use green screening. We're going to have some studio where we start filming and, uh, well. Uh, the motion tracking is, of course, already perfectly in control, for our purpose at least, which means uh, camera tracking, so we can put uh, virtual characters in the environment. The next level, which would be uh, tracking people, uh, so you have uh, me walking around and then my bottom half will be uh, robot legs and stuff. That's interesting to, to do, but we don't know yet how far we get for that. So, Kia is still in there. Yeah. You think it might be possible within three months? Might be. That means we get it. So, uh, Mr. Writer, you know, so you can also enhance humans. Done. Yeah, you can give them anything, right? Yeah. Or enhance the robots with human parts I and mean, all those kind of things. Yeah. Um, global illumination render, this the, of course, that's cycles. I mean, uh, Brecht is probably busy coding, or is Brecht still here somewhere? He's coding, yeah, that's good. But um, I have full confidence that Psychos is going to be ready when we need it. I mean, the highlight of Mango is going to be for rendering in uh, May, June, July, uh, summer period. So there are six months left for him to get it totally stable, to make sure it works for animation, that there's no noise or good noise reduction, uh, that it works for animation, uh, fluids, uh, volumetrics. All of that we discussed, it's in control. He thinks he can do that. The thing that might not work at that time is hair. So we're not going to do hairy or furry robots. <laughs> Too bad. I'm sorry, you have to rewrite the script. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, maybe uh, uh, you can put hairy robots in the script, but uh, you no. Know. I'm, I'm afraid it will get a little bit problematic. Yeah. At the color pipeline, most people have been getting familiar a little bit with color. In the 2.4 series, uh, color was 
what you get, right? You press a button and you see a picture on your screen and everybody's happy. But if you go into film pipelines or you're using photography or film input and you have to get back to film or to, to theaters, color is really, really, really complicated. It's a really nasty topic. And if you control this really well, if you have a good color pipeline set up, you can really get brilliant, good looking images in the theater or on your desktop or on a DVD everywhere. You can see the difference. If you put a, a Pixar a DVD in your normal DVD player for your TV, the films look perfect, beautiful. And then you put Big Buck Bunny in it, and it's like, huh? but it's, it's, it's not that thing. And that's, that's, that's color. It has to do with good encoding and color uh, management and that kind of thing. So for film, it's crucial to have a good color pipeline working. Uh, masking. Obviously, I mean, uh, that's probably the only really missing thing before we can do anything with uh, uh, visual effects. Masking, 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 right? Masking, that's all. If we have that, then we can finish it at a minimum level. Without masking, you guys won't even start working on it. So I understand it. There's somebody in the United States working on really good masking, feathering, rendering software. And of course, with Sergei and some others, we can make sure it gets a great interface within Blender, so you can do masking everywhere, anywhere in the interface. <coughs> yeah, last thing is grading. Uh, you didn't do grading yet for uh, Project London, right? No, that's happening still. But you can do grading in Adobe After Effects. You do that a lot, so you get the shots already, color, the color you like to have it, or, yeah, okay. But uh, I've, I've seen quite some grading systems in the past. Uh, on Nakebus, our uh, official film studio. And what you can do with color in the end, with grading, is amazing. Huh? So you can still, even when you're completely ready, then the grading stage, you can still make this film look like a film. There's lots of color algorithms for it and tricks. And it would be great if we have more access to this grading stuff in Blender, in the sequencer for the final edit. Where we are going to do that is still a little bit open. So these are, in a short, the technical targets for an open movie. And that's why we do this. We not only want to have lots of fun making a short film, but we want the community to support that by donations, buying the DVD in advance, to enable us to make this really ambitious short, to get the technology working, and make something compelling and blend them. So Ian Hubert has been invited to be writer, director, and he's also going to be the writer this time, which is a big challenge, of course, big pressure. So that's, he's already writing things. I can't really say anything about it. No, 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 no. It's in development. Uh, this creative process is usually that you c we could do a complete open creative thing, right? Put all the ideas. But yeah, you know how it goes. The people say, I have a great idea. Yes, I have a great idea too. So, and then you get uh, 1,000 really great ideas. But we don't really need ideas. I mean, it's not that we have no ideas ourselves, right? <laughs> That's uh, the, the, this an artistic thing. Artists have ideas. The problem is how do you get that out of you? And how do you make sure that the idea he has is really his best thing he can do? That is my worry. I get out of him what's really in there and help him do that in the best way possible. And that will be for everybody on the team who is involved. I really like them to give their best, but they should feel totally confident that they are in a safe place with a team where they can be vulnerable and show their own creative ideas without being immediately killed by the community who says, ah, that sucks, ah, that looks really bad, ah, that's a stupid idea. I mean, that's what you get online too quick, I think. That's, uh, having a small, confined environment with, with a creative team to develop ideas is still something I believe in is important. But who knows, one day we might do an open movie with everything open. Huh? Let's put all the ideas on the web and see what happens. It's possible. What we also decided is to already invite a couple of artists, which is uh, Sebastian, who...
So it's like the Campbell button of motion tracking at the moment. Without Sebastian, we can't make this film. That's a total, uh, yeah, that's, that's a fact. So we, we need him to, to rescue us. Uh, that's the main thing. But he's also a great artist, so he can be involved on the whole stage for modeling and designing the environment and make sure we have a perfect motion tracking, a help on the filming or designing the sets. We have to talk about how that will all work. Yeah. <coughs> Jeremy, who's now in, um, in Sydney, uh, Jeremy Davidson did the uh, animation uh, for Sintel. He was especially really good at designing complicated action like the dragon fight, the storyboard at that time was only like dragon and girl have a conflict or something, right? Takes 40 seconds, so, or one and a half minutes, I don't know. So we had some trials and tests and we had some ideas, but Jeremy really has uh, this visualization uh, talent. That means so you say, okay, there is a robot and here's a little girl and they have to get into a fight, right? Now what can we do? Now, and he will think of how in action and motion, but action also means storytelling. I mean, you know about that. So, so David is, uh, or Jeremy Davison is a really good team member for you to get that kind of stuff going on. He can design action perfectly. Uh, Michael Williamson is our, um, our concept artist and storyboarder. Uh, he's in uh, London. Uh, he impressed us also really a lot for the previous film, for Sintel, as a concept artist. At that time, he couldn't get involved. He had his own stuff. He's, he's working for Electronic Arts, the Sony uh, Computer Entertainment, doing concepts for games and stuff. He loves science fiction. He loves this whole futuristic thing. And he really likes, of course, to get Amsterdam somehow transformed into a futuristic thing, which is the big challenge we are going to talk about. And Andy, of course, Andy is back. He's going to rescue us at the end of the project. What, Andy? 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 Andy's here? He's hiding. But everybody knows him. Andy. Yeah, woohoo! <laughs> He's going to do the last talk today. Uh, I've been working with him several times on, on projects, and he's so good. He can uh, click, 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 and it, has, uh, it looks good, has good sense for shape, and uh, he's totally reliable. And in his self, he's worth four people, so we can uh, finish this film for us. But for the worst, I mean, we still have five or six positions open, depending on how much money I'm going to collect in the next two months. So we can have probably eight people in Amsterdam working for six, seven months on completing Mango. All that information will be on the Mango website, how many and how much and stuff. Uh, tomorrow, officially, the recruitment starts. So actually, tomorrow, I have to write a blog post about what kind of people we need and stuff. So. <coughs> The other plans for Mango is to do a little bit more focus on development this time. I don't know if people remember, uh, Sintel started as uh, like, oh, let's have eight, nine people working on it for eight months, uh, then or for eight minutes, uh, eight, eight, eight. But then it became more people and more minutes and more time. And I had the impression that even though it was really worth finishing it, I mean, I really love what we did. It did also take down Blender development in the end more than it helped, because all the focus of the key people involved with Blender were, was on the film and not really on Blender anymore. So it's important to get a clear, really good focused development going on around the film project. So my idea is to have some kind of a sprint, a development sprint of weeks, a month, six weeks, something to, uh, to refine still and get the key Blender developers, fly them into Amsterdam, put them together in one room and talk about, okay, how are we going to fix the dependency graph from Blender? Animators, uh, most people know, like yesterday we had these sessions already about the NLA and stuff. The animation system is in a bad state at the moment. Not that bad, but 
Hè? If you talk to animators, they all say, yes, it is possible to do stuff in Blender, but it didn't go as fast as, for example, we expected it to develop. That's what we did for Elephant's Dream and for Big Buck Bunny. There was really a couple of steps up. But for 2.5, it, you know, because animate everything is not possible, really. So, yeah. Yeah. That's uh, one of the things. And it's getting too slow. So, because, yeah, people are making more complicated works. Instead of uh, 50 bones, they now have 500 bones and multiple, uh, multiple deform layers, a mesh deform on it. And suddenly, you cannot animate one character anymore in real time. Uh, not even, so you can't do 10 either. So, so what the dependency graph project will do is fix uh, things like threading. So you can have, if you do and duplicating groups, so you can have one character on your library file, link it in 20 times with different uh, animations on it without it taking you all your CPU time. With them. Proxy levels. People probably know what I'm talking about. So if you, if you borrow stuff from a library, you should be able to change one property. I like the color of a, of a texture or a property of a bone. So that's what pro proxy levels means. Uh, animation states in multiple times is that you can have like two Blender windows and each on a different scene. And one window will play back the animation of a character and the other one will have the, the dope sheet or so and the pose. So you can have a frozen time and something that plays back the animation without getting into conflict. That's what the same as for threading, so you can have multiple threads doing it. And every thread has its own internal time. So the state of objects has to be taken away from the object and has, been, has to be given to the dependency graph in technical things. So at the moment, object states are objects, and we have to take them away from it. Developers know what I mean, and maybe you too, huh? Got a picture? So probably in January, February, that's the idea. Uh, everybody on the list I've mailed, they're still available, but then we have to sign up uh, for this still. <coughs> Yeah. So this is the, the main planning. So we're now doing concept, script development. November, tomorrow, call, call for participation. Uh, December, start the campaign for pre-sale. Usually, uh, we do a DVD. Probably it will, again, at least four discs this time, maybe six. I don't know. Uh, we have to figure it out. It's a shorter film, right? Three minutes. Two and a half. So this, one of his last concepts was already getting to seven, but I uh, have to keep it short. So if you keep it like three, four minutes, what's, what's my preference is to focus really on the execution. It should look really good, should work really good. The shots should be, we should have the time to do it really well instead of getting the stress of finishing all the shots, hundreds of shots, if you have to do that in two or three months, then you can't spend the time on uh, getting the quality really high. That will be always the, the battle, right? So, so in uh, March, we could start with the team. Uh, first, make a complete animatic previous before you start filming, of course. So the whole team can already make the film, then participate in the filming process too. I would like to have a studio if we have green screening work where all the artists can sit in the studio with their computers and laptops. Uh, do Kier is coming over. We can do uh, live capture everything, all the video stuff, track it immediately, put some st uh, stuff in it, and the characters and the robots or the environment, and try to get this cycle working where you have the preface department, the artists and the motion trackers, processing immediately what's being filmed and feed it back to the director and the artist to see, okay, it is working. It would be so awesome to have that work. Yeah, that would be great. So April to August, finalizing. 
and in September or so the premiere, so at October next year, of course, we will have a film, that's for sure. Six, seven artists, two, three devs, so eight, maybe ten people maximum to come over to Amsterdam. Yeah, so that's uh, the mango plans. Are people having questions already, like, ah, I have ideas how to make it, or I, that's the special effect specialist. Do you think you will have some kind of explosion or something like that that would need an integration between rigid body, soft body, and stuff like that? Explosion. Yeah. Okay. I'm <laughs> <laughs> so, since you have, <laughs> yeah, si since you have this kind of of thing, I, I think it would be very cool if you will hire maybe during the speed time um, a TD that already worked with this kind of stuff. That is very difficult task to understand how it would work because at, at the moment um, there's no uh, a scene dependency graph that helps you um, put information from every part. I mean, if you have rigid body, it doesn't um, work with soft body, that doesn't work with smokes, that doesn't work with particles. Uh, I mean, you know, all the physics systems and the soft bodies and the rigid bodies, we don't even have them, but they're all different systems in Blender. They do share a bit. I like, but some have a point cache, and somebody has something else, and something safe, something on the disk, and other is in memory, and so you don't have a, a overview or total control. You can only control an individual system, but if you want to have multiple systems doing things together, and smoke, and soft body, and cloth, and particles, and, 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 then you run into troubles, right? So that's what the dependency graph is meant to solve. But if we will solve, I mean, that the dependency graph is a, a system, and then all the other systems have to be added to that. So it doesn't mean that after six weeks or four weeks of dependency graph recoding, everything will work. But especially the physics systems are the most complicated ones to redesign and fit with that. So how far can we get from Mango for this? I don't know. You need really, really good developers for that. That's one thing. So we hope at least the particle side of it can be tackled really well because we have good particle developers. Uh, Jana and Lucas, they are both available uh, to, uh, to work on it. Uh, the fluid and smoke part is more complicated. Uh, Daniel Genrich is maybe available. Uh, uh, Niels is not available, the original designer. And it is really heavy, tough stuff to get that done. But for visit body and uh, fract fracture and explosion, there's a couple of developers working on it already. So that's close. So yeah, uh, we can do visit body, explosions, uh, sp uh, smoke and fire at the level as it is now. Uh, particles uh, improved. That's what we need for a special effect film, right? Yeah, I mean, it's the minimum. Without smoke and explosions and fire, we're not going to do mango. Oh, of course not. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> oh. um, it wasn't on the target list of targets, but uh, masking has been the big hole in Blender compositing for a while, and uh, I know people are working on it at the moment. But I was just wondering, uh, you know, is there any plans to? make that better and, and closer to what other programs have, like with 2D tracking and controlled fall off and all the nice stuff that is in Flame and all the big compositing programs. Yeah. Uh, but that's what I meant, that's the masking thing. Is, uh, we have to make a design for that still, but we know the basics. It's the uh, first coding in the libraries to, to make it possible. And then develop good tools that you can use it everywhere. And of course, you need to be able to track it. You can have video tracking, and then the track points can control a mask to move around and that kind of stuff. Of course, yeah, that's the minimum. I see that you're planning to make a pipeline for visual effects. It's probably pretty new to Blender to do it all in Blender. Um, are, are you going to document this so roughly? 
like I've seen a thread on Blender artists and um, people ask what would they pay for if they uh, want to get the Mango DVD. And they all asked for documentation, for the rough documentation of the pipeline you're building. Because I've heard that was a target, not for Sintel, but it hasn't been done. But are you planning to do this for the next open pro project? It's a really good tip. We need far better documentation, also on the open movie projects. We try to get it organized for Sintel, but you need like a full-time writer in the studio to com continuously digest and report and write down everything we do. So uh, we didn't find a way how to finance that, a person who can write everything. We tried to do it with Wiley and uh, Tony Mellon uh, was supposed to come over to, to, to help. We did it remotely, but it's really difficult. So uh, probably we depend still on the, on the community to do this. And I hope that with the Blender proceedings plan, we can also support it in a better way. That we can have a system, and there's an editor, and we have Jason van Gamster to help on it, organize it. It will, will, will come back, it's a good topic. Yeah. More questions? Feedback? What are you going to be filming with the equipment? The equipment, what, you, uh, what you're going to use. The, uh, the plan is to try to uh, mimic a, a high-quality Hollywood setup, meaning a digital camera from RED or the latest uh, Sony stuff with 65 SD, 65 something. It has 120 frames per second with shutter. It's a, it's a beautiful camera system. 4K or 8K at least. There are companies in Amsterdam who like to support us with that. But we're not going to do motion tracking like uh, uh, with uh, multiple cameras or with magnetic devices and stuff. Everything we do should be the, uh, possible to redo with Blender. And the camera, uh, that's, uh, that's an open thing. So if we cannot get a sponsor for this really high quality uh, red cam stuff, we do it with the Canon thing on run around, right? It's also fun. It's very very realistic anyway, because most people can afford those little cameras. But it's, it's cool to have a, a professional camera system. So I try to get cranes and rails and all the toys uh, for the camera guys to, uh, to make it look really good. And we do have a, a subsidy, a sponsoring money from the Amsterdam city to pay for a lot of those costs. The 25, 30,000 we can spend on the filming equipment and rental, which is not bad. <coughs> I will be another sprint for modulation or animation for Sintel. An another sprint for animation? What do you mean? Oh, oh that kind of sprint. Yeah, 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 to, to involve the community. Yeah. Uh, we really like the modeling sprint. It worked. Perfect for Sintel, but you can only do that if you know what we need and when and how, right? So, uh, if once we know how we are going to film, we probably need a modeling sprint to model Amsterdam or stuff. Or people, but here you have pictures of uh, all the Amsterdam houses, put them on polygons with enough detail that we can use it. Uh, for, for rendering, right? You can't make it flat. It has to get depth. And Amsterdam houses are not like easy stuff, right? They have lots of crazy details. So how far do you get with that? So we definitely can use a lot of help in trying to reconstruct this ancient stuff. Uh, the bridges and the houses. We will need that. Yeah, there's a lot of work for that. <coughs> It's almost time. Yeah. One last question. Yeah, about the, di the director of photography. I think uh, it would be interesting to know who will be the director of photography because in the live shot of Project London, that is a great film, I see. Uh, but the, um, the weakest point is the light because there is no so much integration between uh, the um, shoot part and the 3D part. There is, of course, three times cool 
no, than the, the short part is. So um, I think it would be a great thing to know who will be the, the director of photography once you will shoot, because it's one of the most important person on the set. We will try to do it really good. At them. And of course, you are welcome to come over and we will post all those plans and to, to advise us or to say, well, maybe don't forget this part or that part. Huh? But uh, that's, we, we are limited of mostly in budget, and, but we are not limited in time. So we are always we try to get as not, enough time as possible to do it really good. Yeah. yeah. The person we want to involve for that is the DP, director of photography. He's experienced. He already did two feature films and uh, lots of commercials. He knows how to do this. He's experienced. He's not much experienced in a visual effect film. Not at all, hardly. But that's because we don't have that in Holland. There's no visual effect business here. Yeah. Okay, so thank you very much. Uh, thanks, Ian, for sitting here. And, uh, Movies, we start already like September, August, and then have the team coming over in October, working all the way to uh, in spring or in summertime. The Mango Film Project will start in February and continues over the summer until September, we think. So at the Blender Conference, we cannot present anything yet, apart from that we have lots of ideas and things. So I would like to use this session to quickly introduce to uh, what we plan to do, uh, the people who are going to be involved, and of course, get the feedback from the audience, like, okay, what do you guys expect from it? Or what do you do not want it to be? Uh, uh, what are the lessons learned? Um, are you guys maybe getting tired of open movies? Uh, you want to have something else, uh, or games? Well, that kind of things I would like to hear. But first, uh, very quick, so what is this project? What is uh, Mango about? And who's going to work on it? So what we want to do is uh, explore the visual effect pipeline. And this is what uh, Ian has been showing. There's a lot of interest in it. It's really fun. Make film, do motion tracking, add 3D elements, bring everything together, get really good color grading, compositing, and everything working to get convincing film. Nowadays, you cannot make any film anymore without having computer graphics in it. There's a lot of little blender things that have to be worked on to, uh, to make that work. Like Ian is used to work with Adobe After Effects. That's how he makes crappy looking 3D awesome, right? That's the trick. So that kind of tricks, we want to have that in Blender too. So what is that, right? It's not that complicated. It's just computer graphics, right? Buttons, some masking, sliders, and they're done, right? Yeah. So that's the things uh, we would like to see in Blender working. The green screen keying is mentioned a lot. The current nodes in the compositor can do some keying, but uh, it's... I mean, I've, I've seen keying software in the, in the 90s already with lots of ideas and, and technology behind it to make perfect keys for hair, for glass, for everything which is possible. But we will probably use green screening. We're going to have some studio where we start filming and uh, well. Uh, the motion tracking is of course already perfectly in control for our purpose at least, which means uh, camera tracking, so we can put 
uh, virtual characters in the environment. The next level, which would be uh, tracking people, uh, so you have uh, me walking around and then my bottom half will be uh, robot legs and stuff. That's interesting to, to do, but we don't know yet how far we get for that. So, Kia is still in there. Yeah? You think it might be possible within three months? Might be. That means we get it. <laughs> so, uh, Mr. Writer, you know, so you can also enhance humans. Yeah, you can give them anything, right? Yeah. Or enhance the robots with human parts I and mean, all those kind of things. <laughs> um, global illumination render, this the, of course, that's cycles. I mean, uh, Brecht is probably busy coding, or is Brecht still here somewhere? He's coding, yeah, that's good. <laughs> but um, I have full confidence that Cycles is going to be ready when we need it. I mean, the highlight of Mango is going to be for rendering in uh, May, June, July, uh, summer period. So there are six months left for him to get it totally stable, to make sure it works for animation, that there's no noise or good noise reduction, uh, that it works for animation, uh, fluids, uh, volumetrics. All of that we discussed, it's in control, he thinks he can do that. The thing that might not work at that time is hair. So we're not going to do hairy or furry robots. <laughs> Too bad. I'm sorry, you have to rewrite the script. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, maybe uh, uh, you can put hairy robots in the script, but uh, you know. I'm, I'm afraid it will get uh, a little bit problematic. Yeah. At the color pipeline, most people have been getting familiar a little bit with color. In the 2.4 series, uh, color was what you get, right? You press a button and you see a picture on your screen and everybody's happy. But if you go into film pipelines or you're using photography or film input and you have to get back to film or to to theaters. Color is really, really, really complicated. It's a really nasty topic. And if you control this really well, if you have a good color pipeline set up, you can really get brilliant, good looking images in the theater or on your desktop or on a DVD everywhere.